Say happily heavenly birthday if you are. Everybody, this is a different type of vlog that I'm not usually doing as a flight attendant vlog or a travel vlog. This is a story time about the first time my dad took me to a recruiting visit for college. And many, I have many stories that my dad, for my, I have many, a lot of stories about my dad. And a lot of those stories, there's lessons in those stories that I didn't get as a child, but I got when I got older and look back on it, it was like, okay that's why he did this or he did that like i have 37 years worth of stories and lessons that he taught via the way that he felt like parenting you know my brother has several stories if you ask any of my cousins um that were around my father they have their own versions and own stories of him and just a little bit of about my dad so you can kind of get a little frame of reference and it might make sense my dad grew up in the metro Atlanta area, but he was a city boy, but with a country boy's heart, if that makes sense. He loved to be outdoors, camping, fishing, hunting. Uh, my aunt told me a story about him killing a raccoon and making a, uh, using the skin to make a hat like, like David Boone. So that was my dad in a nutshell. He also, you know, played sports. And when people used to tell me about how good my father was in football, you would have thought they were talking about this mystical creature but everybody had the same exact story so it couldn't have been made up you know as i got older so it's like if everybody's telling me the same thing it couldn't be made up so fast forward i'm 16 17 years old going on a college visit to savannah state and for a frame of reference for those who don't know savannah state is an hbcu in savannah georgia which is located in the south on the southeastern uh side of georgia it's on the on the Atlantic coast. And normally it will take four hours from Atlanta to get to Savannah. That's 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 the normal. Let's let me just put that out there. That's the normal. So my dad comes to get me and my brother to go down. We stop at the gas station, right? He gives me two dollars to go put in the tank. What? And before you say anything, two dollars, remember this is probably 2000, 2001, and Back then, gas was 99 cent, 98 cent, maybe a dollar, depending on where you went. So back then, gas, if you had a car, like a regular car, $5 can get you half a tank, 10 can fill you up. So in my mind, when he gives me the $2, I'm thinking he's just trying to, you know, top off the tank. And before we get out of the gas station, my dad reaches into his glove compartment and pulls out a map of Georgia and say, hey, uh, we need to get to Savannah, so I need you to tell me which which way to go so I can get to Savannah. What? And before you say, what about GPS? This was before GPS. This was before GPS. We did have MapQuest, but my dad was not a MapQuest type of guy. He was a map guy. So he's the reason why I can read maps really well to this day. So if the GPS, I lose service and my GPS went out and my GPS is up, I can open it up to read the map to get to where I know how to, to where I need to go to get some service. So I'm good at reading maps just because of that. My dad was a map person. So I look at the map, I see where Savannah was. I was like, oh, that's easy. We can take 85 and then I think we got to go down to 16 and then it's a straight shot to Savannah. He said, no. We're not taking the major highways. We're taking the intermediate highways, the little back roads to get to Savannah. Now that's gonna take a lot longer because we're going through these smaller towns and these intermediate highways. Now looking back on it, probably the reason why we took those back highways was because either A, my dad didn't have insurance, his tag was expired, or his license was suspended. One of the three, if not all three. That's just my dad, hated to love it, that was just him. That's what it was. So we get to ride down the, the, the intermediate highway. I don't even think we was riding maybe 40 minutes. We stop at the gas station again, put another $2 in the tank. And we stop again. We didn't ride but two hours maybe, and we had it stop three times. And the third time, I asked my dad, I said, Dad, why, why we just don't fill up the tank so we don't have to keep stopping? Because I, at that point, I was getting really irritated because I'm like, let's just get there, right? So he goes, he said, well, we could do that, but what if the car break down and I need money to buy tools? Or if I need money to buy a, a part, 
or we got to get i need to pay the money to get the car towed somewhere if it's something that i can't fix on on the side of the road now at 16 17 it made sense but it didn't make sense because i was like why wow, we need to just get there and go it wasn't until i got older i saw the lesson in that it was you know when i get paid i don't spend all my money on frivolous things that i don't need and the importance of building up a savings just in case something happens just like three four months ago when my uh hot water heater went out i had the money to pay for it. did i want to pay for it no did i want to pay that price no but they were the only people that was going to come out that night and i had to pay whatever price that they was going to give me because i wanted it to get done right then and there so that was the lesson in that as far as when I look back on it as I got older, that was a lesson in that not to spend your money. Now, it wasn't like my dad didn't have money because my dad used to always have a wad of money. And I know some people want to ask, well, why would he have all his money on him? Well, this was before debit cards and, and true checking accounts that we have today. Like I think checking accounts existed, but they weren't the same as they are today. So you probably got a bank card and back then there was no direct deposit. So most people, when they got their check, cause we still got paper checks, they went to the bank, maybe left a, you know, maybe a couple of hundred dollars in the bank and then kept the rest on them or in their house or whatever. My dad chose to keep it on him. So he had a knot of cash. So it wasn't like he didn't have the money. He just didn't feel like we needed to spend all the money on gas because he had a truck. And then, cause we had to come back too. And it took us, we ended up going, we ended up getting down to Savannah, but it took six hours. It took us six hours. And it took us another six hours to get back because we went the same exact route back. And my mom was like, what took y'all so long? And we, you know, we told her what the deal was. And she was just like, oh, it sounds typical like him. Now, I took my daughter to Savannah State and definitely wasn't putting $2. We filled up my car and we rolled the four hours and we filled up the car on the way down there and rolled the four hours back because I had the savings just in case something was, would happen. Um, AAA is built into my insurance. Back then, I, that wasn't a thing. So my dad, had, I have so many stories of my dad doing so many things like that, but it also teaches me a lesson. But you can imagine as a, as a 16, 17 year old with a 12, 13 year old brother, we sitting in the car doing all these stop and going, stop and going, stop and going, stop and going, stop and going. But he taught me a lesson in that, in that day. Granted, I didn't, I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. And I think that's the lesson. And that's all the lessons that my dad leaves behind me. You know, he may be gone, but everything that he taught me as a kid and everything that he showed me as a child growing up, even into adults, you know, my dad still was teaching me things. They are left behind with me to pass on to my kids. Now, granted, I don't do it the same exact way. I may do it in a roundabout way, but not this same exact way because, you know, my situation is a little bit better than his. But um, that's what I wanted to come on and share that story. And just, to, you know, the lesson that my dad, and you can, if I interview, like I said, if I interview each and every one of my cousins, my brother, they would tell you a story and it's gonna sound similar. It's gonna sound similar, but my dad would do some of the stuff. You would just be like, what? But you got the money. You, he is some of the similar stories that we all have. And I'm glad to have had that in my life, you know, because I know some people, they didn't have it. You know, they didn't have a parent to teach them certain lessons growing up and I'm glad I have it and I had it and didn't take it for granted. So hopefully, you know, my kids feel the same way about me when they get older because they don't understand it now because I didn't understand it then. So hopefully they understand it when I get older. I want to say happily heavenly birthday. If you all want to hear more story times, different things like that, let me know in the comments. You know, I have no problem with sharing. I, I felt like I need to open up a little bit more personable, a little bit more, not too much. You know, I'll give you a little bit, then take a little bit back. Just let me know in the comment section what else you would like to hear. As always, hug on the ones that you love. Tell the ones that you love that you love them. I'm out.